<clears throat> and now here's our topic we've talked about numerous times. What do we know about reading? We don't like it. It's unnatural. Right? Unless it's an awesome novel. It's like, okay, how quickly can I skim through this? One of the things you want to remember when we're reading is that we can approach it in different ways. We try to approach it in the way that is most efficient and effective for us in a particular situation. Okay, I want you to read the top. What does it say? Oh, manly. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Oh, wait, no. It's manly. A lot of times we go and we just kind of skim over it, right? We've all heard of that, at least most of us. So we have a tendency to just kind of ignore that. You tend to do what's top, called top-down recognition. That's why it's so easy for you to miss things like typos. That's why it's so important when you are writing a cover letter for your job or looking at your resume that you look at every single letter. Because it's very easy for us to miss those things. We tend to approach things in a context-driven manner. That's a top-down approach. Where we are focused on a sentence. Or we might even just focused on a word. We don't look at the individual letters. If we are fluent in a language or it's something that we're familiar with, that's the approach we tend to take. There's also feature-driven. We identify simple features of letters to words. In other words, it's bottom up. We tend to use that more when we are learning a language, learning how to read, learning a new word, or even learning the alphabet. <clears throat> read this. You guys did awesome. Mary had a little lamb. Is that what it really says? Yeah, no. But boy, we just get it like that. It's amazing, isn't it? Aren't we brilliant? We're just so awesome. OK, what's this? Look how brilliant you guys are. I have geniuses in this class. It's our twinkle, twinkle little star. Again, that's a top-down approach. This is something we have a tendency to do. We are processing it in a way that is the quickest and easiest for us. Now, I want you to think back when you were in kindergarten or pre-K, or you're learning letters. How do you learn the difference between a B and a D? You kind of have to focus on what side of the circle is that line, right? You start with that. And once you learn that, OK, then you can focus on grander things. That is an example of bottom up. You're looking at the specific features and moving to larger pieces. <clears throat> so what are some of the problems that we encounter when it comes to reading? in our ability to really approach it in a manner that fits best for us. All right, so let's look at some problems. Teeny tiny little fonts. Seen the commercial where they're telling you, you will lose 20 pounds in one week. And in teeny little fonts that you can barely read, oh, this is not usual. Results may vary. Or you can't read it at all. Or on the commercials, they give you this, Come in and buy this Mercedes for $5,000. I don't even know what they say. Very similar. Noisy backgrounds. Now, what do I mean by noisy backgrounds? Auditorily. Of course, I'm thinking, you know, I can't hear it because my child is playing her music at 10 bazillion decibels. Oh wait, I decided on my web page everyone needs to see my children, so behind all of my text will be millions of pictures of my children. How easy is it to read now? Yeah, not so much. <clears throat> Needless repetition, we've actually talked about that already. 
Centered text. This is one people don't think about. Let's look at an example right here. If you look at centered text, this is actually more difficult to read than if you had it all start at the left margin for our language, for the English language. Why do you think that is? When you read it, where do your eyes go? Okay, you kind of go over here and then, oh wait, where is it? Oh wait, you kind of cut, oh wait, oh. It's very quick, but you actually find it makes a difference. When we have everything on the left margin, our eyes automatically know where to go because it is consistent. This is more difficult to read. That's why in a lot of documents, in a lot of web pages, you'll see, you know, a title may be centered, and that's okay, but the text itself is going to be justified to the left if it's English. Terminology? Who knows what stat means? Anyone? Expedite. Expedite. Hurry up. Quick, quick, quick. What domain is it from? From the medical field. Now, the majority of us didn't know what that meant. This is why we need to be very cognizant of the domain we're writing for and what terminology they use and who's going to be using that product. So we know in the medical field, they use the terminology STAT. Do you think most patients know that? They don't. So if you're creating a web page to help communicate with a patient, should you be using the word STAT? Probably not. Text overload. It's text and text and t it's just blocks and blocks and blocks and blobs and blobs and blobs of text. That's fun to read, right? Yeah, not so much. So we want to remember that. Now here is just another example of our needless repetition. You want to make things easily scannable and easily understandable. All right, which do you think most users are going to like more? The bottom one. Now as IT people, we still have a few minutes. I'll get through my slides. As IT people, what do you think most IT people tell me about this? It has more detail. I need that detail. You can't give me this. I'm not going to know what to buy. I need that. Is there a better way of doing that, do you think? Yes. Yeah, yeah there is. What are some ideas? You can use bullets, bold, and you know, things like bold and heading. Anything else? Break it apart into sections. You could have a little link that you hover on that will pop up if, if you want that information and it's not there if you don't. Much better ideas. Which is easier to code? The blob. Much easier to code. And if we're in a hurry, which one do you think we're going to do probably? The blob. That's right. How easily scannable is this? Very, very easily scannable. It's a very, very nice example of what we want. It also helps provide scent. Right? It helps the user figure out where they want to go. 